men that go MGTOW are either genius or they become genius. They see things that most men cannot see and most females won't admit to. Try explaining what hypergamy or brifles law is to a blue-pilled man and see how far that gets you. Yeah, he may agree with the concepts and just nod his head away with agreeance. But what is he going to do with that knowledge? How far is he going to take that? These men cannot go against the grain. The grain is embedded within them. A description of genius is exceptional intellectual or creative power or other natural ability. Another is an exceptionally intelligent person or one with exceptional skill in a particular area of activity. Is that all it takes to be a genius? Well, according to a simple search on Google, that's all that it takes. Now you might find it strange that I say this and it might come across as arrogant. Maybe the bar has even been lowered for what it takes to be a genius and I know I'm not using the IQ bar of what it takes to be a genius. I'm talking about something more important than that. Let's go back to an exceptionally intelligent person or one with exceptional skill in a particular area of activity. If a man was to be exceptionally intelligent or have exceptional skill in a particular activity, that is one thing. But what about implementing this skill or skills? What good is it for a man to have these skills and not be implementing them? What can cause a man to be constrained? Imagine yourself in your mind. Close your eyes. Picture your body in an open space, a vast room. You're in a relationship. And yes, let's be honest here. We know what relationships are like. Let's not kid ourselves and think we are in an everlasting honeymoon. That shit is long gone and over. Now picture in the near distance your partner. She is standing roughly 10 meters away from you. Out of your forehead comes a beam of light. This beam of light begins at your forehead at around 10 centimeters wide and is projected all the way to your partner. Your beam of light is strong, but at the same time, it remains 10 centimeters in width all the way from yourself to your partner. Everything about you is locked within this beam of light. Your skills, your passions, your talents, focus, drive, motivation, ambition, your energy, everything. Try and focus this beam elsewhere or even spread your beam to another subject or even hobby and you will feel the wrath of the female whom is backed by government. You are being controlled and your genius is being restricted. I'm not better than you. I believe us men are all genius. Or at the very least, we have genius within us and it's up to us to pursue and expand on that genius. Now imagine yourself in that same room, but this time you do not have a partner. You don't have a female who can call men with guns to coerce you into doing and thinking as she pleases. You are not under her control. The beam of light that comes out of your forehead is strong. It rushes out and spreads far and wide, not in a straight line like in the prior example. Living a life without having a female constantly harassing you in your wake or slumber causes your consciousness to go to another level. Your beam can be focused on what you want, when you want. You now also have the ability to dwell into introspection. Your mental and emotional processes are focusing on the right areas in your mind rather than going through a mental controlling mechanism that is constantly trying to adjust and adapt to the abuse you suffered from your ex-partner. This beam of light spreads to areas that you enjoy. You used to be a writer, a poet, but we only use the words used to be because it was marriage or cohabitation that caused it to become a past thing. You just realized that it was never a past thing. Rather, it was a thing that was bashed and something that just got in the way of your partner. You now bring it back up, shake the dust off it, and you start writing again. You realize that your poetry is the best it's ever been. It's like, what the hell did I even write that? But you know you did, because you did. You were proud of yourself, and it gives you a sense of self-satisfaction, the motivation to pursue even better poetry. Your genius was being held back, and you just realized it. 
But the beam is not being controlled by your poetry. Your poetry is not selfish, nor is it writing that is controlled by government whom can bring men with guns to your doorstep and throw you in prison. Rather, the poems you write cause you a state of mental elevation and freedom that knows no bounds. Your beam rushes out and also focuses on other departments. You go to work feeling refreshed from a good night's sleep. At work, you can focus, unlike the other men with the restricted light beam. You wish they would know what you know. You try to help them, but on most occasions, it falls on deaf ears. What you know and what you practice gives you an advantage over all the other men at work. You take a look at the things that used to be difficult and now you laugh at yourself like, are you serious? Is that all it is? Is that all it takes? Is that how easy this was and always has been? You take another look at that timber staircase and almost effective immediately, you know how to replicate it. You take a few looks at the engineer drawings of the basement level and you realize that this is all a piece of cake. Your mind sees things you never saw because of all the constraints that it had on it in the past. You connect dots within a week. Things that take years to learn via a degree, you learn within weeks. Your genius is now alive. It's not about IQ, it's about you and being the best you that you can be. Your boss realizes that the foreman in charge of the building is approaching you now. Your employer sees the potential in you and obviously for him. So he gives you a more important role with an increased pay. He gives you your own job. Why is this all happening? Is this too good to be true? A complex that consists of three towers reaching nine stories into the sky. The beam of light reaches other areas and now starts chiseling out other places where it hasn't been for a long time. You buy a bench press, slowly focusing on your physical health as well. You continue to write poetry and record it in musical form and then take it to another level by editing the best musical clips that you've ever constructed. Your mind has time to think of escapades that you practice, escapades such as flying your hexacopter or simply just fishing. This beam of light is strong. This beam of light is genius. Your genius. Do not let anybody steal this from you.